Thank you, everyone. Um, may I remind you, everyone present, that this meeting will be broadcast live via the internet and the recording archived for future viewing. Uh, on to part one. Any apologies for absence? Oh, you did great. Thank you. Okay. No others? Anyone else here? Um, number two, minutes of the previous meeting. Thank you. Number three, any declarations of interest in the Council Code of Conduct? Yeah. Uh, yeah. um, on the um, St. Paul's application, I sit on the project board. I have consulted with our uh, monitoring officer, so I will declare, but I don't need to leave, and I am entitled to vote tonight. Yes, yeah, similarly speaking, agenda item 11, St Paul's Church plan application. I sit on the project board for St Paul's, discuss with monitor officer. Uh, it's not a prejudicial interest, and I have been told that I can take part in the meeting and vote. Chair, I'm uh, declaring the interest in, on, on uh, item 11, 2017 stroke 012694, the Hyde at St Donuts. I'm the architect and I will be leaving the room. On to item agenda number four, site inspections. And is Marcus Goldsworthy in this room? He's in the garden, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Item number five, building regulations and applications. Note. Note, thank you. Number six, planning applications determined by the head of regeneration. Nothing to add. Thank you. Number seven, appeals. Justina? Just for noting, Chair, um, there's nothing to add. Okay, thank you very much. Item eight, delegated list, trees. Item nine, enforcement action update. And that's Justina again. Um, thank you, Chair. This is a um, report that's been prepared. It's not to seek um, enforcement action, but to give members an update on uh, the action that we are pursuing in respect of the site at um, uh, SiteServe, which is the former hangar site at Landau. Um, as you will recall, the application was reported to November two th 2017 committee where a resolution to um, approve the ap application was approved by committee. There were a number of conditions uh, attached to the planning permission, some of which required the submission of details um, in, uh, for the council to approve. And this provides us an update to members on where we are with um, the discharge of those conditions and also some other matters that um, are relevant to the site, particularly in terms of uh, clearing the site at um, the adjoining hangar where the fire was back last year. Um, I, I, I hope you've all read the report, so I, I don't think I need to um, go through what it says, but if you have any questions, please let me know. Any council like to bring anything to attention? Councillor Cave? Uh, I'd just like to thank uh, Justina for bringing this report. Obviously, we're five months in from uh, our meeting in November when these conditions were placed uh, on site serve, and uh, it doesn't look like, apart from our visit that we made, nothing much has happened. In actual fact, none of the conditions that we placed on them have actually been met. Um, I note uh, in the report the requ um, a verbal request, uh, an informal request, has been made to move the um, hours of operation on the site. And at the moment, I, as I understand it, they're not keeping to the hours of operation that we've already put on. So I'd, I'd take a very sort of a dim view to them coming back and asking us to remove a condition uh, when they're not even playing ball with us really on all the other conditions that we put uh, in place for them. Uh, so yes, yeah, so once again, thank you for bringing it. And um, I'm, I'm hoping that we could make another site visit very quickly. Sorry, um, just to update you, since I've written the report, um, I, 
I had uh, I have got in contact with the agents of the operators uh, just to say that they need to give priority to the discharge of the conditions, the outstanding matters. Um, I gave them a bit of advice on the informal request to vary the hours of operation, but suggested strongly to them that that is not the priority as far as we're concerned and they need to um, resolve the outstanding matters. They have now submitted details of all four conditions. Uh, so that's the fire prevention mitigation plan, external surfacing, the lighting and the uh, fencing along the boundary of the site with the caravan site. Um, so that application is going through validation. I think it, all the information is there. I've had a brief look at it and all the information is there. And obviously we'll be in touch with um, any interested parties, uh, particularly the caravan site, because obviously they're directly affected. Um, I've asked NRW for an update as to where they are with the fire prevention and mitigation plan because of course that's one of their requirements for their permit. Um, I haven't had a response to date because I need to make sure that the plan that we approve is, is in line with their plan. I don't want us to have different fire prevention plans. Um, so I'm waiting for a response from them and I am slightly reliant on them because the expertise is with them. Um, but obviously I will consult the fire service in any event on the details we've had. Um, but as you remember, Councillor Cave, we, um, there was one issue that was brought up that NRW weren't aware of, and that was the wood that was being stored between the building and the boundary of the site. So that's something I've asked NRW to directly address through the plan that they are going to approve. So I'm just waiting for some response from them. Because as I understand it, at one stage in the last five months, NRW did actually remove their permit for the biomass boiler um, because that were actually when we made the site visit and, and NRW were with us, they noted that they were actually burning pallets which were uh, covered in uh, paint. Um, and I understand that they withdrew the license or the permission and now that, that's been put back in place. Um, but I, and I, I note from your report that you've taken um, advice on the distance between the building and uh, where the acoustic fence might sit and where the caravan boundaries are. Um, I am still slightly concerned that in between those two things, and I, I see what the advice was, that actually we probably don't need a fire protection uh, because the space is big enough. But actually, what it fails to take into consideration is that right next door is a biomass boiler, which is always going to burn wood. And so I am slightly concerned still about where that biomass boiler sits within the site. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, sorry, who's going first? Uh, if you don't mind, yeah. Um, if, uh, thanks, um, Christine. Um, as a, a ward member next to the, the site, um, I was quite interested for the update. And um, so I, I would like to ask if it's possible any future meetings that are held that at least one of the ward members from, from Land to attend as well. Because we, we do get as many complaints as you do as part of the, the, uh, the site. Thank you for that. Ms. Walton. It's not on the agenda, but can I ask Marcus for an update on the enforcement of the property in Wembro on the roundabout, the old police house. Now that's been going on for a very long time and don't, nothing seems to be happening. Uh, that, that's something we discussed this afternoon, actually. Um, it's got a bit of a, a history, that site. So. Um, in terms of uh, the appearance of the enclosure that's been erected, initially we were satisfied with the, the appearance of the wall that had been constructed on top of the retaining wall that was already there, but it's the fencing panels above that we thought were excessive. And uh, the action we were going to pursue was simply in respect of those fencing panels. Our highways colleagues have um, asked that uh, they, they express their concern about the structural stability of the wall, because obviously it's right next to the pedestrian footpath, and they wanted um, confirmation that the wall, um, the retaining wall that is supporting the new wall was capable of supporting that weight. 
um, an application was submitted and there has been a lot of toing and froing between the applicant and our highways colleagues in terms of the information that highways need to be certain that that wall is structurally sound and I've had a bit of a problem in getting both to communicate. Um, I'm assured that the information needed to satisfy highways will be submitted um, and it's something I'm chasing um, but I have told the applicant that regardless of what happens with the wall, it's the fence we still have a problem with. I can't see any justification for that. So apologies of the time it's taken, but I think it's quite technical information that highways are seeking. And I don't necessarily know whether that technical information was actually, you know, the structural calculations were undertaken when the wall was constructed. And it's now they're trying to retrospectively prove that the um, the wall and the structure that's there is safe um, so as soon as I have something from highways to say yes they're satisfied or no they're not the application can't be determined which means I can't pursue action in respect of the wall Can I just, I'm sure the local member will keep an eye on it we've been talking about this for a long time Thank you both. Um, Councillor Penrose? I was just going to add as well that this, I believe there's two unauthorised entrances, one vehicle and one pedestrian, onto the section of road which also was part of the original uh, complaint there, Is which I was, mm, the Wembo side. Mm. Um, I, th I think the garage has permission and that's around the side, around the back of the house, I suppose. So the garage... Um, now, the pedestrian access, we have taken the view that it's not expedient for us to pursue action because... Um, do you mean the pedestrian access or there's a gap? Yeah, there's a gap the yes, um, but it, it is a gap, but it's it's been enclosed with some temporary enclosure and it's. I've had a look at it. It's not a gate as so, of sorts and it's. I haven't, I've never seen anybody trying to gain access over it, so I can't say that it's an unauthorised access. Um, there is an enclosure there, albeit temporary. If they ever try to gain access there, that is something that we can pursue, and they know that. I, I, you know, I've advised them in the past that it's unlikely that we would grant consent for a, a new access there, considering how close it is to the bus stop and the roundabout. So it's one that I pass a lot, and I, you know, it, it looks awful, and I, I'm frustrated by the system. Really, I'm afraid. Sorry. Thank you. Are we finished on that? Thank you. Um, on to item number 10, general planning matters. Stephen, I think this is down to you. Thanks, Chairman. Um, <clears throat> this is a, a general matter that relates to uh, condition 26 of the outlined planning permission that relates to the 475 dwellings uh, land north of Cowbridge. Um, members can probably recall that in the determination of the application, they requested that the drainage details, as outlined in Condition 26, and all reserve matters application would be, should be reported back to Planning Committee for their approval. Uh, we've currently got an application in which we're considering, uh, Condition 26. We're considering it in conjunction with the Council's um, drainage team and also uh, Welsh Water. Just to summarise um, some of the issues, in relation to, to foul <coughs> drainage, uh, the applicant is seeking to install a pumping station within the site, uh, which is indicated as approved on the master plan, and the provision of a, a rising water main that will connect the foul sewerage system from the site uh, with existing apparatus south of the site on Church Road in Lambledian. Um, that will then connect to the uh, Lambledian sewage treatment works. The following consultation with Welsh Water, uh, they've confirmed that these de details are acceptable in principle uh, for the disposal of the surface uh, foul water, subject, of course, to a Section 104 agreement uh, directly with Welsh Water. Um, there were some issues in relation to the location of the pumping station and the impact on immunity of uh, nearby properties. Environmental Health have confirmed that uh, the pumping station would need to be 15 metres um, from the residential development. Uh, the, the plans that we've submitted now shows it in accordance with, with that. 
um, officers are seeking further clarification from um, Welsh Water and the Council's environmental health team just to ensure that a statutory nuisance um, from either odour or noise uh, wouldn't arise. Uh, briefly, in relation to surface water uh, drainage, the condition uh, discharge application is accompanied by uh, technical details of the proposed link road and phase one of the development, um, which Council have previously uh, approved. The submitted details include a number of sustainable drainage features, including attenuation infiltration basins uh, in the land both to the east and the west of the link road, uh, provision of a swale on the route to the existing land to a major road, uh, which is to be realigned as part of the works, in addition to infiltration basins and uh, check dams also within phase one. Uh, following discussion with Council's highway and drainage team, um, the general strategy for the drainage site uh, appears to be acceptable in principle. The submissions relating to the drainage of the site include significant level of information that's largely very, very technical in nature and ongoing discussions are taking place between the Council's drainage engineer and um, and the developer. So what we're saying is given the principles of the drainage strategy um, are considered to be appropriate, subject to further details, we request that members reinstate officer delegation to allow the approval of these delegate matters under delegated powers. This would, of course, be subject to uh, formal approval from the Council's drainage team, uh, Welsh Water and uh, the Council's environmental health team, again following the submission of uh, technical details. Um, Clive Moon... Is, is here if we want to ask Clive on any any technical aspects uh, in relation to to the request to um, bring the delegation back to to, to officers. Whether Clive's going to come come forward. <coughs> there may not be a question. But. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, Councillor Parker, I'd like to ask a few questions. Yeah, uh, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Stephen. Um, as members may recall. When we had the original application, the proposal was to actually attempt to put the foul drainage through the centre of Cowbridge by carrying out a study to remove uh, surface water from the main drain. Now that the, uh, the, the new application has been made, um, I'm content uh, should the committee decide to uh, re remove the uh, de delegation that we've requested. Um, but I would ask that prior to final discharge, because I know that the final details have not been approved, that as ward member I could be consulted just to ensure that I can uh, discuss the matter with other fair ward members and obviously concerned residents, as you know. Um, but the technical details, I'm very content to leave with our officers. Thank you. Thank you. No one else like to say anything? Okay, thank you. Can we um, note, note that, please? Sorry, so we need to prove that. Do we need to vote on that, please? Everyone in favour? <coughs> it's unanimous. Okay, now on to um, agenda item number 11, planning applications. First one is 2017-01337, St Paul's Church, Arcot Street, Penarth. Uh, we have um, several several people talking on this. Plus, Councillor, uh, Mr. Tim Lan. Sorry. 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 Stephen will talk this first. Okay. Um, we're just there's just uh, a matters arising note. Um, as from the 16th of April, Cabinet approved a number of updated uh, supplementary planning guidance documents that relates to residential and householder developments, the conversion and renovation of rural buildings, biodiversity and development and mineral safeguarding. Um, these new SPGs do not alter the adopted LDP policies, but they do update the supporting guidance on how to interpret the policies in line with latest national policy and best practice. So the change in the SPG does not materially affect or alter the assessment of uh, any of the applications um, before your planning committee tonight, nor alter any of the officer's recommendations. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, Mr. Tim Lan. Sorry, sorry, Joe. Uh, Stephen, introduce the report first. Thank you, Chairman. Um, 
Okay, so this is uh, application reference 2017 uh, It's for the rede redevelopment of the former St. Paul's Church site. The, the plan in front of you uh, shows the, the context of the site in relation to the surrounding road network uh, to the northwest. You can see the redevelopment of the, uh, the Billy Bank site as, as Penarth Heights. Um, so it's re redevelopment of the former church. We have a plan in front of you that shows the scale and massing uh, of the existing the existing church. It's for the development to create one um, or 14 one and two bedroom affordable housing units in addition to multi-purpose community hall landscaping uh, with associated cycle parking and access. Um, in a little bit more uh, detail, so the existing church, uh, it's, a, it's a, a stone, light blue light stone building with bar stone surrounds. Um, the, the church building and the hall have been historically in a variety of uses, including an art centre. The building has most recently been used as a gymnasium, but has been vacant since early 2011. Again, this, in terms of the location of the site, it's located uh, in the north of the town centre, uh, within what is predominantly a residential area and the site is located in quite close proximity to Penarth Heights. So as I said previously, the, the scheme seeks demolition of the building. Um, the part of the building retained is going to be the, the facade. Um, if I just drop down to the, the, the photo. So it'll be the facade and a small section of return to the first uh, buttress, which is, as we saw on site this morning, those are present probably about one and a half, or probably about two metres into the site. Um, the new building itself will have a broad L-shaped footprint, measures about 36 metres um, along the chapel lane frontage and a maximum width of 22 metres, then steps down to a width of 9.5 metres to the rear. The building will have accommodation over three levels, uh, with shallow uh, mono-pitch roofs with eaves height of 7.8 metres and ridge height of 10 metres when measured within the site. In respect of materials and finishes, uh, what's proposed is a mix of buff and brown uh, clay facing brick, uh, through coloured through coloured renders. Uh, the windows and faces will be in, in grey, as, as will the rainwater goods. So in, in terms of a bit more detail, the community use itself, if you look at the... the going the wrong way. It's very difficult to see on here, but the floor plans show that... Um, so the community use will relate to the front part of the, of the building. Uh, it's 368 square metres of floor space. Um, there'll be a dedicated access uh, for the community use on the Arcot Street side at the southwest corner. That will then lead to a lobby area. Um, uh, and then on, on from that, a large multi-purpose hall and then a smaller multi-purpose hall with associated kitchen WC at ground floor, floor level. At first floor level, further community uh, space is proposed, also with toilets, um, an office and a meeting room. The community use will be served by a dedicated um, cycle parking and a bin store as well. At the moment, there's no specific user identified for operating in community space. So again, in just respect to the residential uh, element, it's 11 number one bed flats and three number two bed flats. Again, accommodation over three levels. Um, the parking is relates to five parking spaces which should be accessed off the rear lane with associated uh, turning space, um, electric inward opening gates. As part of the proposal, the scheme will remove the existing uh, concrete or stone uh, boundary wall at the rear and reinstate with, with a railing detail, uh, details of which would be uh, uh, submitted by condition. So the other works proposed relate to the widening of uh, Chapel Lane. The first 10 metres will be, um, the existing footpath will be removed the first 10 metres to provide uh, a 4.8 metre wide uh, width for, for two-way vehicle passing. Um, and equally, the rest of that section of uh, narrow uh, footway will also be removed. Um, so the scheme effectively seeks to improve that uh, that rear lane. So everything is going to be resurfaced along into the side of the site frontage in addition to the provision of, uh, of street lighting. So... Uh, that's probably the summary of the, uh, of the application description. Have you seen your, um, okay. oh, thank you. Thank you, um, Stephen. Now over to uh, Mr. Tim Lan.
<laughs> I knew we'd get there eventually. Uh, you have you have three minutes when you're ready. Good afternoon, committee members. I wish to raise three specific points, but should first clarify the overall position of the majority residents and community. There is objection to the size and scale of the development. The currently specified number of residential dwellings will add significant demand in an already overpopulated area. It is also continuing to create design issues that have not been resolved with this application and will ultimately compromise the well-being of intended residents. Reducing the number of dwellings with a redesign of the site would deliver the correct outcome for future residents of St Paul's and the community. I wish to raise three specific issues. First of all, retention of the facade. The recent geotechnical reports were unclear as to the retention of the facade. We now understand that the current planning application can only be for the retention and the use of the facade. Therefore, the planning committee must assure that any changes to the use of the facade will require a full application to be made and are not considered as revisions to the planning. Two, Chapel Lane infrastructure. In order to deliver the current project, the Chapel Lane infrastructure needs to be properly considered. Whilst there's been some progress, there's still a sense that the developer and Vale of Glamorgan Council are intent on limiting their liabilities in this area rather than enabling what is required. For context, the original design suggested access to St Paul's from all three points of Chapel Lane and made full use of the site location. It sought to open up the lanes and deal with the challenges currently experienced such as fly tipping and antisocial behaviour. The encouraged use of the rear lanes was an intention as contained in the design statements submitted by the agent. To quote the WYG planning statement, an environment where neighbours interact regularly ensuring high levels of natural surveillance, particularly for the rear access lane, and to improve the levels of natural surveillance in the area benefiting the safety and security of the area. The current submitted plans have deviated from the original design concept in order to accommodate other requirements and have now attempted to focus the main access onto the Arcot Street Chapel Lane Junction. This is poor planning for a number of reasons. Shortest route mentality will incur St Paul's residents wanting to use all Chapel Lane access points to travel to and from the town centre. There's a blind corner for traffic exiting Chapel Lane onto Arcot Street. Existing pedestrians use Chapel Lane and need to be assured safety from increased traffic use. And lack of encouraged natural surveillance throughout Chapel Lane will continue the current problems because at the moment only partial resurfacing and partial infrastructure change to Chapel Lane is being promoted. The committee should consider the following. The entire Chapel Lane system needs to be resurfaced. A pavement needs to be maintained on the east to west Chapel Lane section in order to preserve pedestrians. Number three, parking and traffic. The community are not confident in the parking appraisal or the agent's assessments of vehicle ownership. They both represent limited research and speculation. Highways assessment of the overall traffic impact is also questionable, with no real evidence provided to demonstrate how the increase in traffic will be managed. They also provide confusing comparisons. Thank you, sir. If you have three minutes up, thank you. Uh, do any members have any points of clarification they'd like to ask Mr Land? Okay, thank you very much. You can sit down now, sir. Now we have um, Sarah Sweeney speaking on behalf of Mrs Naomi XL. You have, you have three minutes when you're ready. Good afternoon. My name is Sarah Sweeney and I am the chair of the St Paul's Community Group. I'm presenting on two key issues around wellbeing sustainability of both future residents of this development and the wider community. These being the community centre and the amenity areas. St Paul's has long been viewed as a community centre in one shape or another since it was built serving St Augustine's North, originally discussed as the main recipients of the Section 106 Community Facilities money from the Crest Nicholson negotiations. The community facility element of this proposal falls short of the expectations of the community in terms of size and in consultation. The floor space allocation included in the brief was not based on a needs analysis or proper consultation with the community. This is not in line with the Wellbeing and Future Generations Act of the involvement and collaboration of the community, nor objective one of the Vale Zone Wellbeing Plan to enable people to get involved, participate in their local communities and shape local services. 
The brief went as far to state in block capitals that any bidder did not have to undertake a community consultation before applying, which could be viewed as discouraging involvement and collaboration, evading wellbeing objectives and ways of working. What measures in the leasehold agreement between the Vale Council and Naweth protect the community space for future generations? Should Naweth fail to maintain the community element, would the Vale then take back this part of the development? Amenities. The planning report acknowledges that the amenity provision falls significantly short of council standards and indeed Naweth's own standards. Good amenity space isn't necessary for the basic needs and well-being of future residents and the wider community enabling neighbourly interaction, sense of community, reducing isolation, especially those with mobility issues. In the amended plans, there's no provision for such spaces or, or a place to hang out washing. There appears to be the erosion of the minimum standards and good practice in favour of financial viabilities of a complicated, unsuitable space. Does the committee accept these concessionary immunity provisions as acceptable for the well-being and the economy of future tenants, especially those with mobility issues? Thank you. Do we have any points of clarification from any of the members? Councillor Johnson. I was just wondering if you could, if you could just tell me um, what, con what if any consultation has taken place to local residents regarding the, um, the size and need for community space in the area. Thanks. Um, in regards to um, NOWIS consultation, they did have a consultation um, event at uh, the Paget Rooms, but in regards to the um, tender that was written and put out for, for, for um, housing associations to bid on the, um, on the uh, site, um, I don't recall any um, consultations being put forward in terms of what the needs analysis was of the community. Okay. Thank you. Any others? Thank you. You can sit down now. Thank you. Now we have Councillor Ruber. You have three minutes, okay? Um, I represent St Augustine's Ward. Um, I'd like to firstly say that in principle I welcome this proposal to combine social housing with a community space. I'm proud of the fact that the Labour Party in the Vale has ensured through the LDP that social housing sustainability are, the, are its keystones and in turn that will support diversity in the, com in the communities. Um, Nerwith has a reputation of building good affordable homes and supporting sustainable communities and, and this is what I hope to see in this proposal. This scheme has a great potential to, to meet two needs for the area, much needed social housing and a desire for an innovative community space. There has been opposition to this scheme, as you've heard, from the community, and it's very important, in my view, that the residents around St Paul's and Nairworth listen to one another. There must be give and take to produce the right development. St Paul's has had a beleaguered past going back years, and with this scheme, we have an opportunity to change that. To this end, I feel the scheme may be improved with further public consultation on two specific areas. Firstly, I'd like to see more consultation on whether the facade should stay or go. I think that there's something really creative could be done, um, for example, if the facade went. Potentially, there would be more community space. One could create a modern facade. I'm not an architect, but it seems to me that it's worth both Nerwith and the community exploring this together. This will mean drawing up new plans with alternatives, and the process. but I think the process will give an opportunity for both sides um, to explore how sustainable housing and an innovative, an innovative community space can be achieved. Secondly, I would recommend that there's con more consultation on the parking. The community need assurances that parking is adequate. St Paul's has been out of use for too long, and I am excited by the prospect of it finally being put to good use for the community. Um, and let's not forget this is the first serious um, uh, scheme we've had put forward. So let's take it seriously, but let's not hurry it, and let's take time to really get both sides together to produce something will be here longer than any of us. Thanks. Uh, any councillors have any points of clarification? Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Um, th thank you for that as, as the local member. Um, you made a couple of suggestions there regarding both the facade and the car park in terms of consultation. Are you asking us to accept, defer or reject this proposal tonight? I'd say defer. I, I would say that 
you know, given that it's, we've waited this long, I think it's worth, um, you know, having taking the time to defer it so that there's more consultation on those, for me, on those two specific areas. Councillor Bird. Yeah, I, I don't know whether I'm right or not, and I'm looking towards the officers and Marcus on this, but um, if we were to change that, I believe the retention of the facade was probably in the tender document. And if we're changing anything like that, it would probably have to go to retender, and you'd probably be looking at another two or three years before we get anywhere else. But uh, I take clarification from Mark. Uh, no, that was a, uh, it wasn't actually in the tender document. The site was, uh, the, the tender was very clear that it, the site could be cleared completely. Uh, it was Newer's decision to do that. Um, one thing I would like, point I'd like to make is that Newer did undertake quite an extensive consultation exercise, um, and that consultation exercise uh, led to them increasing the size of the community space uh, during the course of the um, uh, submissions and, and comments from residents um, and the loss of uh, one residential unit. So I think to be fair to New is they've very much listened to residents. Um, they, beyond that, when uh, the application came in, um, originally there was a more amenity space and slightly less car parking, and they have listened to um, some concerns that were raised by residents in terms of car parking and increased the space at the back, obviously losing some amenity space to increase the parking. So um, to be fair to New is I do believe they have listened to consultations and, and to, to the responses of local residents. Now I'd like to ask um, John Hurley, who's speaking for the applicant, to talk. When you're ready, John, you have six minutes. Thank you, Chair Members. Uh, before turning to address some of the issues that have been raised to demonstrate they have been adequately considered, there are a number of key benefits that we brought up which will be brought about by the proposal which do need to be highlighted the scheme is located on a uh, on a brown, on a vacant brownfield site in a highly sustainable location it's a genuinely mixed use proposal that's supported by a number of policies at both the national and local level and in accordance with that it's been recommended for approval by officers as we've heard this scheme will deliver 14 affordable homes and has the full support of the council's housing strategy team as the committee report confirms, there's a significant housing need in Penarth, partly due to the high market rents that there are. Based on the figures taken from the Council's Homes for You waiting lists, at present there are 391 people waiting for affordable accommodation in Penarth. This scheme will go some way to meeting this massive level of demand. The proposal, as we've heard, will also deliver a brand new community space of around 368 square metres which will include a multi-purpose hall, kitchen, and a smaller standalone room. Now, as has already been mentioned, we did undertake detailed consultation with the local community before the planning application was submitted about how the overall community space could be used. Uh, as Mark has, has, has mentioned, originally the Newith were proposing to build 15 flats, but following the, uh, following the consultation exercise that was undertaken, we admitted a further unit so that we could increase the level of community space on the site. And this is a good example of how we have listened to the views of the local, local residents and how they then have been factored into the final proposals. You know, the community space itself can be used for a wide range of activities and Newith have already appointed an external consultant who will undertake further detailed consultation with the local community about how that specific space can be actively managed and used. In terms of the car parking points, an independent parking survey has been undertaken and this has demonstrated that there is ample spare capacity within the area to accommodate the development. This was clearly, visit, uh, clearly visible at a site visit this morning. The committee report also confirms that both planning and highway officers are in support of the proposals. They've also stated it's highly accessible. The centre of Panath is only 400 metres away and the national cycle route which takes you to the, to, to the Bay and Cardiff City Centre, runs elect directly to the front of the site along Arcot Street. In the parking report that was submitted with the application, information was provided to confirm that the levels of car ownership with affordable housing developments is much less than open market proposals. This, this 
within the report, census data has been used to show that 60% of affordable housing tenants within the wards do not have access to car to a car, whereas this is just 15% for open, uh, uh, owner occupied households. It would also likely be the case that this application would be accepted in terms of both the national and, and, and local planning policy if no car parking was provided. This is supported by a recent appeal decision referred to within the committee report for the Windsor Road Church in, in Barry. This scheme is for 24 open market homes, not affordable, and with a large office on the ground floor, and it proposed no car parking and is ultimately allowed by the planning inspectorate. So in summary, the scheme is acceptable in terms of parking. It provides sufficient car parking, there is capacity in the area, and car ownership levels of affordable housing tenants would be low in, low in this case. In terms of the lane and footpath that issues that have been raised, there are a number of points that do need to be noted. The request to remove the pavement and resurface Chapel Lane was made by the Highway Authority. It's therefore a fact that they do not consider that these proposed improvements would create any negative highway safety impacts. The Highway Authority have also confirmed that the existing footpath is substandard in terms of width and surfacing. Additional street lighting columns will be installed and this will significantly improve lighting levels for both vehicles and pedestrians, but also the security and surveillance of the rear access lane for all residents. Visibis visibility is also very good and vehicle speeds are, low, are very low and the required parking restrictions along Chapel Lane will also ensure that this isn't blocked by parked cars for pedestrians. In terms of the facade, we can confirm that the, that the scheme engineers have undertaken a survey of the church and we have detailed proposals in place for its retention as part of the overall development proposals. It also needs to be made clear that there is local support for the proposals as well. As part of the consultation process that we undertook in the project rooms back in September, before the application was submitted, we received a number of positive comments. And in fact, these positive comments totaled more than the objections we received as part of that consultation event. And these confirmed that the new community space and the much needed affordable housing were all positives of the scheme. This has also been confirmed in recent months by further contact that you have had with the local residents in the area. So to sum up, the proposed redevelopment of the church represents a distinct regeneration opportunity for Penarth. It would deliver much needed affordable homes and a brand new community space. Thank you for your time and we respectfully request that the application is approved in line with the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hurley. Do we have any points of clarification for any members? Councillor Thomas. Yeah, in terms of clarification, uh, the only thing I'm, I, I, I'm curious about is where the idea to keep the facade came from in the first place. If you lost the facade, you'd have another metre and a half, perhaps, of, of, of land that would be available for a community space. Yeah, in, in, terms of the, in terms of the design approach then, this is of the design that was submitted as part of the tender process included the retention of the facade. Now, it's obviously an issue that we've discussed in quite detail with the local, local community and it was felt that although the facade, although the building itself isn't listed, it's not necessarily in the conservation area and it's not even a county treasure in the Vale of Glamorgan, the facade was of a character that it's and, and because it could be retained in terms of its structural stability, it was felt as part of the overall design approach to the scheme that that would be an overall benefit and would ultimately fit in better with the character of the area than, for instance, the, re the remainder of the building, which would ultimately have to come forward in terms of its design directly adjacent to the street then. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Cave? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to ask a question again about the design. Um, I w actually was the one who raised the question of the facade, but you seem to have answered that now. Um, I'm just curious about the size of the windows, because light and design was something that was raised by um, earlier uh, in our conversations and discussions. So I just wonder, um, we're keeping a, a facade, which I, you know, you've explained the reasons behind that. I'm just wondering about um, the decision to have particularly small windows because it does seem that you have a design here that maybe for the tenants that are going to live in this, uh, these properties uh, there, there, might be, there might be more light available to them uh, if the design was um, 
somewhat more imaginative. Just to clarify, you, you're making the point in relation to the windows within the new part of the development? Yeah, okay. Well, in terms of, in terms of the community space, that is the part of the scheme that fronts onto the street. Mm -hmm. So even if the facade wasn't going to be retained, the, 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 the front of the site would still be the area associated with the community, community space. Yeah. Now, in terms, in terms, in terms of, in terms of the light levels within each of the units, we've obviously looked to maximise that as much as possible. There are obviously constraints with the site. It's obviously in quite a highly dense, densely populated and built-up area. So we have had discussions with the planning officers in order to look at some of the windows within the scheme. Uh, for example, we do have some high-level letterbox windows, but those are predominantly it within areas such as like kitchens and bathrooms. So not habitable rooms. So the habitable rooms themselves will will have a window and, and will provide sufficient light levels within each of those units. Then, Councillor Johnson. Uh, thank, uh, thank you. The um, the proposal is for a very mixed model with the community space quite close to the um, to the new housing. As uh, somebody who's a trustee of a, of a recently built community centre, I'm well aware that. Uh, when the weather gets nicer, everyone uh, flings the windows open and you suddenly often have uh, a Zumba class being performed um, in front of a large number of people in the area who get to hear it. I'm just wondering, um, first of all, what you're, how you're going to ensure that the residents, both of the new properties and the surrounding properties on Arcot Street, are not affected by uh, additional noise that comes as a result of the reopening of the community centre and what can be done, um, you know, not just in terms of those sounds, but also um, perhaps ventilation inside so that uh, any potential user in the future is able to use the centre without throwing the windows open, etc. cetera, um, should this application be passed. Okay, well, thank, thank you for the question. I, I guess, as we heard on the site visit this morning, the design of the building will have to accord with building regs, so there will be sufficient sound insulation between the community space and the residential units. It would also, as, the, as these are gonna be social rented properties, it will be within obviously Newid's interests that there aren't any uses taking place within the community space that would then ultimately impact upon their tenants for obvious reasons in terms of them obviously then having to deal with any complaints at a later stage. So sufficient safeguards can be put in place. The uses of the, the, uses of the hall are restricted in terms of one of the planning conditions that would be attached to the, Attach the permission. Some of the classes can, of course, take place, but you know that will be as part of the overall management of the scheme, which Newid will be heavily involved with, it, involved in as, uh, as part of the development going forward. Do we, any more questions on clarification? No. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Hurley. You can sit down now. Oh, stand down. Um, I'll pass this back over to Stephen. No, thank you, Chairman. Just to just <coughs> sorry, apologies. Just to go through the late reps. We uh, sorry the matters rising we'd received on this application. Um, firstly, uh, a neighbour comment from uh, Mr. Tim Land. Uh, also, a neighbour comment from uh, Kate Stoke and David uh, Collinson. Um, the planning agent and uh, Deborah Margaretson, who works for Specialist Services Officer, submitted comments in re in relation to the geotechnical report that we had received. Um, as a result of that, we've removed condition 11, which related to an assessment for ground gas. Uh, there's a further um, uh, letter from the planning agent advising that this scheme has now been registered uh, with Secure by Design. And also uh, there's further comments from Mr. Ma uh, Max Wallace, Tim Land and Councillor uh, sorry, Sivigenham uh, in relation to the geotechnical report and also um, questioning the demolition of the facade. So just to summarise, all the points raised so far are all covered um, in the officer's report and uh, as partially as, as clarified by Mr Hurley. Uh, generally in terms of scale and the design of the building, we officers have clearly looked at the, the, the relationship of the existing church and the church hall to the surrounding um, houses in respect of overbearing and overlooking. Um, as Mr Hurley has said, 
throughout the application process, we've uh, certain windows have been omitted, which have caused overlooking. In addition to that, high-level windows have been put in. It's also a mix of some obscure glazed windows. Some windows have already been uh, reorientated to, to non-critical elevations. Um, it hasn't been an easy site to, to look at, effectively, because it's surrounded by terraced housing. It's, it's, it's the issue that we get with all brownfield redevelopments. Um, some of the other points made in relation to the fa facades. So just to summarise, as Mr Hurley has said, the application came in um, proposing a retention of the facade. That's continued all the way through. The, geo the first geotechnical report that came in did, in, in the section 7.1, say that it was going to be demolished. Um, that was clearly an error in the report. That was rectified. An amended report was submitted the day after. Um, it's always been intention that the facade will be retained. If the facade is removed, as has been previously confirmed, that will require a new planning application. If there's clearly any different f facade on the front, that's a new application. That's not what is in front of us. Um, in relation to the, the community centre and the community space, I think as Marcus has said, um, it's 368 square metres of community space. It's worth noting that the strategic uh, brief for the for the lease for the site that actually required uh, 300 square meters of floor space and when the proposal was for 15 units uh, at that consultation stage they were only providing 332 square meters so this that's now been increased to 368 it's also probably worth noting that the um the harbour view community center which was on the billy banks development was 364 square meters so Overall, there's actually an increase in community space in relation to the loss of the centre that was on the Billy Banks development. Um, but the Chapel Lane and the infrastructure uh, resurfacing, you know, officers have spoken to to the the, the developers at length and the agent. Um, we, we've actually fought quite hard to, to get the whole of the site frontage and the, the rear side rear of the site uh, resurfaced. In addition to that, the street lighting is providing a significantly improved and a much, much safer route for pedestrians and for, for existing pedestrians running through the site and for, for uh, uh, cars in addition to that. Um, by bringing the site back into use with, with windows on the chapel lane elevation and the rear lane elevation, there's increased surveillance as we saw from the site visit this morning. There is evidence of fly tipping. So we would hope that introducing a new use would, would certainly alleviate the, some of those problems in relation to fly tipping. Um, in relation to community spaces, Marcus has said, as with all brownfield sites, it's always a, a balance between providing parking and providing with amenity space. Uh, as Mr Hurley has said, um, they could have quite easily submitted a scheme with no parking whatsoever. Um, if that was the case, the, the, the whole layout of the site could have been changed and, and the, the development brought in from the Chapel Lane elevation. But I believe Mr Hurley looked at this and looked at you know, pre starts of previous committees that they feel that parking is an important issue and again it's a balance um, we feel that an appropriate balance has been struck whilst the, the immunity space I accept is, is limited nevertheless the scheme has got uh, the bin stores the cycle parking and there's also um, within you know, three four hundred meters there are areas, areas of public open space that can be used by uh, residents um, on the other points, uh, the consultation on the uh, the facade again, we j the application has submitted is for the facade is for the retention of the facade, so we're considering it uh, in, in, that, in that regard. And with parking, the the application has been supported by a, a, you know, the, there's a detailed section of the report on parking. It looks at um, parking surveys. It looks at um, existing user levels of other similar now with now with schemes. It looks at the fallback position if the church were to be reinstated or if the church were to be reused for another use within the same use class, which wouldn't need permission on the basis of the existing church has no parking whatsoever. So ultimately, um, in relation to the to the fallback position, there's actually there's almost there could almost be betterment in relation to the, the amount of parking provided. So I think, say, so all the issues raised have been covered in detail in the officer's report and certainly clarified by uh, Mr Hurley. Thank you. OK, do we have any questions, please? Councillor Thomas. Um, 
apologies if I'm, uh, if, I, if I'm repeating things that have already come up, but I, I wrote this earlier. Uh, this building has now stood empty for many years. In fact, when the last um, since when the last Conservative administration was in power, which was back in uh, 2011, I do not propose to go over the long and tortuous history, as that's not a planning matter per se, but I would like to leave others who may have to involve, uh, who may have been involved to address relevant points. However, a number of public consultations have taken place over the years, and as a result, we have before us this proposal. There's a significant need for social housing in St. Augustine's ward. In fact, all of Penarth has a great need for social housing, and I'm informed St. Augustine's is proportionately the least provision of all the Penarth wards, surprisingly. This proposal seeks to partly remedy that to the benefit of local residents and their relatives who seek to live there. There is also provision for a significant amount of community space, 368 square metres over two floors, which will go some way to replace the community hall that was lost so many years ago due to the demolition of the billy banks. And I would hope that the local community will actively seek to become engaged in the consultation now they're intending to carry out uh, for ideas and proposals for the use of that space. This proposal has, to say the least, aroused widespread discussion within the local community. I've heard comments ranging from those who welcome the development wholeheartedly, unfortunately through to one comment that they don't want any kind of social housing in their area, nor that kind of people. I will say here and now that I will not condone the latter statement and comment, uh, uh, latter comment in any shape or form, but I report it here for information. Much has been made of the strength of community feeling in the area, and I have been at some well-attended meetings where a whole range of views have been expressed, as already described. I have received quite a number of emails on the subject, but when I re-looked at them yesterday to try to get a feel for local opinion, I find that there were many emails that came from less than 10 individuals. So I cannot confirm, as claimed by some, that there is huge opposition to this scheme. The report details approximately 38 letters that have been received. How many individuals does this represent, or are they, as in my inbox, many letters from fewer people? We had before us, um, in the additional items, as presented to us on our desks when we came in this afternoon, uh, again, uh, they include a large number of uh, submissions, but again, uh, these seem to be, uh, there's, there seem to be instances of multiple emails from a number of individuals, so it, it, it kind of is misleading if you look at the submissions on your desk. Some of the issues raised are detailed in the officer's report. Many are not planning matters and should have no bearing on our decision-making process. Parking is a constant concern and has been raised by many. This is a problem across Penarth. and in my experience, it's easier to park in this general area than in many other parts of town. As has been pointed out in the report, the people who are usually housed in house, housing of this nature have fewer cars generally than the population average, and so pressure on local parking provision is unlikely to be significantly changed. Use of the community space is primarily envisaged for people living in close proximity will be more likely to use sustainable travel means than, say, the people who used to frequent the building when it was a gym and mostly came from further afield. There's been a long-standing problem with fly tipping and antisocial behaviour, particularly in the lane behind St Paul's. It is suggested, and uh, we, we saw it this morning, it's suggested, and it's my belief, that this development will help reduce this problem as greater use of the lane, more pedestrian traffic, will deter those responsible. People who indulge in such behaviour do not generally like to be observed by citizens and residents who could report them. There will be increased lighting to the side and back lanes, making them safer for people to walk through at night. I welcome the secured by design application associated with this report um, that we've been informed of, of today and I would like to see a condition placed uh, re the ecological survey and relevant licenses from NRW in respect of the bats that are suspected to roost in the building. The side lane and back lane are, I'm told, used as through roads by cars on occasion. Perhaps consideration would be given to making this one way or access only to reduce traffic, though I accept that policing this would be difficult in the extreme. A five mile per hour speed limit might be a help, or, or um, access only. Um, it has been suggested that the density of the flats is excessive, but on detailed examination of the plans, each flat appears quite generous in the space for residents, and if built to Noah's usual high standards, will be very attractive for those who need this kind of housing. In conclusion, I've not made my mind up whether I will finally support this application, but I will listen to the discussion this afternoon. If, if, if there's any further discussion, uh, I will say that failing some overriding planning considerations to the contrary, 
I can see no reason at this stage to go against officers' recommendations. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, do we have any other comments? Councillor King. Thank, thank you, Ch thank you, Chick. I, can I say I, I certainly welcome the development um, of, a, of a derelict building that's been a blooming nuisance for an awful long time, and certainly the affordable homes that it's, uh, it will lead to. But I do have some sympathy um, with the, some of the objections made, um, specifically those around parking. However, as I read the report, um, it would be that the parking concerns are going to be more over the users of the community space than the residents in the affordable accommodation, because the five the five places seems to be about right, um, is, 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 is my interpretation. Um, and I'm, I, am left, I am left wondering if there's anything that could be done if the front facade was not retained um, um, at the frontage. Um, I live in Landock and we use the, the frontage, the curtilage, whatever you want to call it, in front of the hall as, 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 as parking. Um, and, 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 and therefore I did wonder, but, uh, but doing something that um, my colleague Councillor Park has done in the past of, of using a pencil as a broad scale rule, I'm not entirely convinced there'd be a huge net gain in remembering what happened at the Windsor Road um, um, bu building, building we did, we looked at some time ago. Um, I, I, I am unclear that that would be, that would be sufficient grounds to, to, to reject. Um, but I, 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 I understand some of the comments made by all sides and Marcus's point about the consultation to date. But I, I, I think I could be sympathetic to a, a deferral to explore whether the whether the, the retention of that um, facade and and or parking was 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 of a net gain. Councillor Bird. Uh, yeah, I think um, I'd like to reassure uh, Councillor Thomas about the bats and ecology and whatever they're already in the conditions, uh, and I would like to move officers' recommendation. Have you seconded for that? All those in favour? Oh. <coughs> Abstentions? Okay, thank you. Uh, move on to the next next planning application, 2018-00240, Land of North West Cowbridge. I think this is Stephen again. Thank you. It is indeed, Chairman. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, again, the site comprises of Land at North West Cowbridge. Uh, it was previously granted outline plan information for 475 dwellings. Um, and that included a link road between the A48 and Lantwick Major Road. So Marcus is just trying to call up the plan, which, I mean, I think you've got your reports in front of you, so we could probably run from that. Um, so this current application relates to phases two and three of the last two phases of, of the development. Um, it's for a total of 306 dwellings with associated infrastructure and public open space, and that's within the second phase of development of the site. So this part of the site would be served by two points of access uh, from the link road, uh, as previously proved under the 2014 consent. The two primary routes would run through the site and converge into what is a sort of central feature square. Um, a number of dwellings would front onto these primary routes, with the remainder of the dwellings being accessed by the secondary estate roads as a mix of shared services and private drives. The site includes provision of green space corridors to the south, which run centrally north-south through the site, uh, as, as um, follows the uh, illustrative master plan. Uh, the layout incorporates a number of open space areas, uh, buildings which uh, give, uh, provide accommodation in the form of th 36 one-bedroom apartments, 77 two-bedroom dwellings, 42 three-bedroom and 120 four-bedroom dwellings and 33 five-bedroom dwellings. Of the 306 dwellings proposed within this phase, 
134, which equates to about 44% of affordable dwellings are proposed, and the remaining 172 will be market houses. Uh, the dwellings are predominantly um, a mix of stone and render, although one, about a fifth of them uh, will be uh, finished in brick. That's uh, just a, a brief summary um, of the description. Thank you, Stephen. And we've got no speakers on this one. Um, any councillors like to say anything? Sorry, thank you. Uh, th thank you, Chair. Um, this obviously is the second phase, and um, although I note the comment on the management plan, quite clearly this will only take place when the main link road is uh, com completed, and uh, I'd welcome your confirmation that that is the case. And similarly, that applies to the drainage, because obviously if the drainage for phase one achieves satisfaction, then clearly within that um, proposal, uh, that that drains good. But again, I would just ask, rather than um, request uh, removal for that, is that I be consulted prior to final decision, which I know is not covered by this, but is covered by the original 19, uh, 2014 consent. Uh, for clarification, just to confirm that the design standards for the housing and all the internal details follow that of phase one, uh, that's really just to satisfy myself that I've read the, the plans correct. But on that basis, I can see no objection to the proposal. And in fact, with the discussions that um, the, the, uh, the Chairman of Regeneration and I have had with uh, Taylor Wimpy, we are considerably reassured that the uh, scheme actually uh, has now improved, particularly with the help of the planning officers on the design of the houses. Yeah, just, just to sort of echo Councillor Parker's comments, really, you say that the officers have spent a significant amount of time um, on this scheme, very, very detailed discussion in relation to corner turning units and vistas and viewpoints, and we're really trying to create a, a, a high quality sense of place. I mean, lots of discussion on if we're going to use brick, the appropriate areas to use brick. Um, we've introduced what we feel a real sort of character zone, which I think the, the report describes as, as a square, which is quite a unique sort of boulevard uh, a feature. Um, again, it's it's all based around, uh, restricted to a degree around the, the previously approved master plan, so, so the scheme needs to develop on the basis of that. But um, I mean, one thing that, that is particularly attractive in the scheme is that the, the tree boulevard, which you, you, you know, in most modern developments you don't see now. Um, so those those trees will be a mix of. Um, I don't know if Marcus can zoom in on that. Probably not. But um, it's all about providing a, a sort of high quality boulevard feel on these primary routes in, into the development and providing slightly different character zones with the use of some areas of, of brick uh, they're not the brick is not just pepper potted throughout for for brick's sake the the, the, the small in enclaves of, of brick um, dwellings are, are there to create a real feel of character enclosure and something sort of different but when you look at the site as a whole it's, it is predominantly um, render and predominantly stone um, and in contrast again that sort of follows the uh, the phase one scheme uh, to the south of it which was again that was just uh, brick that was just stone and and render so overall you know we've got to look at the two phases the 475 dwellings together and say this is the final and this is the biggest phase um, and I think as as an allocation it's a very big allocation 475 dwellings say so that the scheme works really you know works very very well and you know, we, we've looked at all of the sort of modern good urban design principles in um, getting this scheme really to, to finalise uh, uh, to finalise scheme. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen. Do we have any um, any questions from the floor? Okay. Thank you, John. Seconder. Sorry, just something that's submitted in the report. That in terms of the just very, very brief, in terms of affordable housing mix, um, 
the, the legal agreement sets out a percentage mix of the types of uh, one bed, two bed houses, etc. Um, housing are happy with the affordable housing mix, particularly having regards to the whole of the site. There's a, a the, the scheme is not quite in line with the affordable housing mix set out in the 106. Now the report um, states that a deed of variation is required. The recommendation doesn't state that, but the recommendation should be. Uh, subject the applicant central into a deed of variation to amend the affordable housing uh, definition. So, if you could bear that in mind in your uh, in in your consideration. Yeah. Uh, just the late. And also note the late rep. Yes. The only other thing, and note the late rep. Yeah. Um, can we have um, a vote on all in favour, please? And those against. Thank you. Motion passed. Okay, the next next one on the agenda is 2017-01269, the Hyde at St. Donard Tresillian. Wood, Dimlands Road, St. Donards. I think, Marcus, I think this is yours. Yes, thank you, Chair. The, this is an application for a uh, manager's accommodation at uh, an existing rural enterprise um, members may recall uh, this enterprise came before them um, some years ago. Um, the application has developed since that time. Um, the application proposes uh, manager's accommodation in an existing building used previously or, or currently as a reception area um, and an extension to that reception area to allow essentially um, the space uh, to still function as a reception area as well as the manager's accommodation. There are some other minor inclusions with this scheme, uh, that is a sauna between two existing lodges um, and uh, a two metre high enclosure uh, as part of the boundary uh, to uh, the proposed property. Um, the application has been assessed against all the relevant criteria set out in um, Welsh Government Technical Advice Note 6, which deals with um, development of the countryside um, and also the council's, uh, council's own LDP and uh, SPG as well as uh, supplementary planning guidance. And um, it is noted that the council's tourism section fully support this, uh, uh, this scheme and advise that it is a very successful tourism scheme in the rural Vale. Um, and on that basis, we have recommended approval. Thank you, Marcus. Do we have any questions? Sorry, any. Councillor Williams. Yes. Um, as we know, this this in in, in the local area, this um, application has had, um, had some history. Quite rightly, I think it's important to note that um, the concerns from the objectors when the um, site was first set up hasn't materialised, and yes, you're right, it has been successful. Um, it's quite clear that um, the the people who are putting this application in um, do require that support to be able to put a, uh, a building there. There is already a building there, and so I don't think it changes anything from what the site is actually doing. So on that basis, I, I haven't looked at all the material um, considerations that agree with this uh, application. So. Unless there's anybody else, I'll move the application. Yeah. Thank you. Is anybody else? Second. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Can we vote on that, please? All those in favour? Unanimous. So we don't need to go for against. Okay, moving on to application 2018-00092, Provincial House, Kendrick Road, Barry. I think this is yours, Marcus. Thank you, Chair, yes. Um, uh, could members note the late representations, or sorry, the further representations, which are comments from Barry Town Council in respect of amended plans that have been received. Uh, the Town Council reiterates their original comments, which are in um, the report uh, before you. Um, this is an application for the conversion of the former provincial house office building um, which is now vacant formerly occupied by Vale uh, Glamorgan Council um, it is based it's on Kendrick Road just off Holton Road or 
uh, yeah, I think it is still Holton Road there, isn't mm -hmm. it? Um, uh, the, it is the conversion to 32 affordable flats, uh, 23 with two bedrooms and nine with one bedroom. Uh, they are located across the existing three floors and it is proposed that 15 parking spaces be provided in the basement. Later in the report you will note that our highways colleagues have looked at those 15 spaces and suggest that probably 13 is a more appropriate number rather than 15. Nevertheless there is um, parking proposed in the basement. Um, the uh, couple, the key issues really in terms of, of, of this development as it is a essentially a change of use with um, obviously f uh, some facade works and um, uh, works to improve the appearance of the building are uh, the principle of the use for residential, uh, the impact on neighbours and in respect of privacy and um, uh, obviously the change in terms of the use from an office to residential having uh, some impact, um, the issues of parking, design and highway safety, um, also, the fact that there is no amenity space provided proposed with the scheme, and also the fact that in this particular case, although it is for affordable housing, um, Section 106 is proposed um, because uh, the you'll probably be aware that we've agreed as a council that up to 25 units um, we will not ask for Section 106 contributions for affordable housing. Uh, in this case, obviously, it is 32 units, and so affordable housing. Uh, sorry, a Section 106 contribution based around the additional seven units um, has been required and that is de detailed in the report as well. Some of the issues dealt with in this report are extremely similar to the St Paul's uh, report we've dealt with before. Um, uh, I don't think I'll go in, if anyone wants any questions I'll just deal with them then please. Thank you Marcus, open to the floor now, uh, Councillor Johnson. Thank, thank you. Sorry, apologies. Um, I've got Mr. John Hurley speaking for the application. I think that's right. Yeah. Sorry, I, I thought the protocol was that there was only a speaker against, if, uh, for, sorry, for the application if there was somebody opposing it. Thank you, Mr. Hurley. Uh, you've got three minutes when you're ready. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Member. So, as, as, as Mr Goldsworthy has mentioned, some of the issues are similar, so I won't, won't uh, go on for too long. But, you know, uh, as, as we've heard, the applications for 32 affordable homes, and are in, in terms of the housing need in Barry, there's currently 1,500 people, as the committee report confirms, on the waiting list, and an annual need of around about 559 new homes that need to be built to satisfy this demand. The scheme's obviously got the full support of the, uh, the council's housing strategy team. It's been earmarked for social housing grants. Uh, in terms of the conversion itself, uh, it's, it's outlined that it's a sympathetic conversion and there aren't any issues with regards to car parking. Uh, as we discussed earlier, affordable housing only, uh, uh, tenants have lower levels of car parking and this site is very sustainable, being very close to the town centre of Barry. And it, it, it represents a good opportunity to provide new affordable housing in, a, in, in such a central and sustainable location. Uh, thank you for your time. Do any members have any points of clarification? I, I'll, I'll make it as my points of clarification, but I'll expand upon the, the issue that's concerning me, which is regarding uh, marketing exercises for this as an office area because of the change of use requirement. We did submit information with regard to the marketing uh, of the property and also the accordance with the relevant uh, planning policy in the LDP in order to demonstrate that there wasn't any demand for this, uh, this building to be retained. When the property was marketed and then was subject to the uh, subject to the bid by the current current developers, you know, that was the most viable uh, option that was considered by the owners of the property. Uh, there would have been the op opportunity for people to come forward and to to have made offers for it to retain be, be retained as offices, but those offers those though those offers didn't come forward. They weren't viable. And ultimately, th th there's no requirement for the building to be retained as offices. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Hurley. Any other questions, points of clarification? No? Thank you. You can sit down now. Thank you. Marcus, you... I'll, I'll deal very quickly with um, Councillor Johnson's question. It's a very relevant question about the um, the use and the um, obviously uh, the fact that it is going from a commercial use to residential. Um, there is some evidence that was submitted with the application which shows that there was no interest in retaining it for office use. But it is also important to note that um, the type of residential use proposed is in such high demand. You've, you've often heard us say um, at planning meetings that um, the demand for social housing uh, affordable housing is is such that it almost outweighs almost every other policy consideration that we can have but that's not to say that in this particular case that hasn't been factored into the equation um, but ultimately uh, the the scheme has weighed and balanced all those various elements and has come to the conclusion that um, or we've come to the conclusion that uh, it should be supported and recommended on that basis um, the other point which isn't related to this application councillor johnson made a very valid question at the start you know if um about whether someone should speak if there isn't an objector and um that was uh, that has been considered before now and has been suggested but there has nothing has been taken forward on that basis so as it stands now uh, whether you're objecting or whether you are um supporting an application you don't have to have an opposing speaker to justify speaking um maybe something members want to think about in the future i have suggested it in the past that it might be relevant but um i'll just throw that out there <laughs> councillor bennett right. um just a query looking at the section 106 contributions on on this development there's just over sixteen thousand pounds towards sustainable transport facilities um however we've heard that this is probably one of the best areas in Barry to access public transport. I don't think there are many bus routes that don't stop somewhere within 100 yards of it. Um, is this an ideal opportunity to investigate the the concept of, of is it streetcars or whatever, where you can actually have a parking space with a, a car that you can rent by the hour? They are in various places increasingly, um, particularly in, in Cardiff people within um, affordable housing younger people quite often older people are starting to walk away from cars but just for those odd occasions they are very useful this is actually a very sustainable way of providing car facilities for people in such developments it's certainly something that the contribution we could investigate using it for um what i would also say is that um members will be aware of the um the gateway scheme which is um, we're currently making a, attempting to make a bid for the Welsh Government to do works at the um, entrance to Holton Road um, and any money received from uh, Section 106 for schemes like this um, could be used for match funding in terms of any bid to Welsh Government. Um, that bid uh, has to be 70%, sorry, thir met with 30% match funding to a Welsh Government scheme. So there are, there are options. I'm not saying it's going to be used for that. We will obviously consider all options when we come to assess what that Section 106 money will be used for. What I would say is uh, there are a number of schemes that it could be used for, so it won't just disappear, certainly. Councillor Johnson. Uh, I, normally, I think the chairs one has slightly different um, setup than ordinary members. So, because he's not wearing the chair, not using the chairs one. Right. Thank you very much. Um, I, 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 I do appreciate Councillor Burnett's suggestion there. I think that should be investigated um, in, in, in general. It'd be very interesting. Um, the point I want, to, the main point I want to raise regarding this uh, this application is it's it's something I brought to committee because of the size of the uh, of the application 32 units and i thought it should go through the proper process rather than being determined outside of that uh, my main concern is regarding the rush um, for the change of use now the um, page 1038 of the papers gives a list of the uh, reasons um, that i submitted as part of the call-in um, to have this discussed here but doesn't provide the detail behind that i think that maybe is an uh, an omission. It would be helpful in future, maybe if there's a call-in letter for that to be included, so that people can see what the original 
um, call-in um, suggestion was. Because the reason that, uh, uh, or one of the reasons that I felt it should be discussed here uh, was the appropriateness of the change of use from office to residential, considering the amount of available office space within the Barry Central Business District area, the amount of time between the most recent use of office space, which is August 2017, and the commencement of the planning process with the pre-application consultation in December 2017, and I've sought also, therefore, whether the site was marketed effectively under its current class of use. Now, if I can follow that up just with um, the quote on page 145, which deals with this, um, the principle of the development, the building is vacant and was most recently used as offices for the Vale Little Morgan Council staff. While the proposal would therefore result in the loss of the existing offices, the building was no longer required for this use following a reorganisation of staff accommodation. I hate to point it out to people, but the Vale Little Morgan is not the only potential office use in this town. Therefore, there should be a proper uh, analysis of the office space required. I say this in advance of a uh, Cabinet meeting on Monday, which will be declaring another Vale of Glamorgan office space as surplus to requirements. That's the Mayor's Parlour. Now, I don't like, therefore, the uh, suggestion that the acute affordable housing need in Barry, which is very difficult, I'm aware of that, I'm, of course, representing the community's first area, etc., um, but I don't accept that the only solution to anything is we must make houses out of it. That is building every single time. So I'm not happy with that. I'm also not happy with the way that the, um, the planning application, the application consultation um, took place because the response that I received uh, in that, uh, that's in the pack, is that in relation to the preference to retain the office use, the proposal put forward by the owners of the current site represented the highest offer and demonstrates that in terms of viability, the proposed conversion is the most financially sound approach. In the event of any proposals submitted by other parties on the basis of retaining office use, they were unsuccessful due to significant costs associated with refurbishments, therefore demonstrating the retention of the site for employment uses is not economically viable or suitable. Now that's their simple response to that, and we've not investigated that, and that's not been considered. We have not looked into the requirement for office use and the viability of office use within the town centre. This is within the town centre of Barry. I believe that, um, that this should be properly investigated before we move straight to a change of use. Now, if I remind you again, um, the Vale of Morgan moved out to that site in the first week of August 2017. The pre-application consultation began in December with full um, plans available. There was not time taken to conduct a marketing exercise, an efficient marketing exercise, based on the current class of use. I would therefore ask, uh, I would therefore move a deferral on that basis until a proper marketing exercise takes place so that we can determine whether that is an, is an appropriate place to be maintained as office space in the centre of our town uh, within 50 metres of the civic offices um, and very close to Halton Road with all of the sustainable office space location issues that equally make it sustainable for the housing as well. Thank you. Marcus? I would, sorry, I would come back and just say that um, while, while a very valid point, um, I would point out the amount of office space that is currently available and other space that is available for rent and, and also for, for sale uh, in Barrytown Centre, including the former sorting office at the front, which has been there, been like that for some time. Um, this is obviously in a location that would not be ideal if you were looking for office space. It is not, it is set back on mainly residential street. Um, it is uh, backing onto a park, so in many ways it is more suited to residential accommodation than to office accommodation in any event. But I, can, I have to come back to the, the overarching need for uh, affordable housing in the area and advise that we would recommend that it is accepted in this form. Um, I will give you an anecdotal piece of uh, information, obviously, in relation to one of the sites the Council is marketing itself, the former IQ, the, the um, Southern Development Site, um, where uh, we have tried to market that for the development of office units. Um, and it is rather difficult at the moment to get um, businesses interested in providing office space in, in locations. So I, I completely understand Councillor Johnson's concern, but I have to say that I feel it is uh, not the most ideal location for office space and that it would the overarching need for residential accommodation of the form that's proposed here outweighs the concerns. Councillor Hodges. Thank you, Chairman. I, I will second the deferral, um, and the main reason being that the very arguments about the sustainability of the site, its transport links and everything, lend itself surely to a proper marketing exercise 
for office space. Now, in terms of what the Vale is doing with the, the Mayor's Parlour in the Old Town Hall, if there is no demand for office space, I, I, I shudder to think at the cost that the Vale will actually find to actually rent that out for. And it should be pennies if that's the case. And I'm not sure that's the case they'll make at that stage. I, I am a, astounded by the, the layout there that lends itself to housing. Beryl Place, there are a number of houses there that are totally and have forever been unable to park. And this, this development for residential, I think, will exacerbate that. Um, yes, there is underground parking available uh, in a cramped underground uh, undercroft there. Um, whether that law be used or not, whether the people there that take up this as affordable housing actually park their cars there or not is another matter. I think the whole area should have been looked at as one because if we're talking about provincial house we're also talking about the potential for the post office front there as well and other areas in that area there um, i think you're starting to create uh, an area that will be so compact dense um, and unsustainable that it concerns me and right opposite our own hq i don't think it's a model that we should be buying into and I can only refer to the um, objections from Barrytown Council, which they have already backed up for the second occasion, that this is an uh, overdevelopment of the site in terms of housing. Uh, the loss of office accommodation within the central Barry area, I think, is a thrust that creates Cardiff uh, Barry once again as a place that is good to live in, but certainly you're hardly able to work here. And I think that the actual fact that there's a uh, no, nil amenity provision is, 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 is damning for this site as a housing development. Um, <clears throat> I think this is certainly detrimental to local residents currently already living there. And I think this would lend itself to a, a redevelopment uh, as proper office space to encourage people to live and both live and work in this town. So I support deferral, Chairman. Councillor Bird. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've thought long and hard about this, and obviously the loss of office space is concerning, but surely uh, additional housing is going to help um, the businesses on Holton Road and the surrounding area. So, yes, there are pluses, there are minuses, um, but I would like to move um, officers' recommendation on this. Yeah, quick okay. oh, Councillor Parker. Yeah, I would second councillor, but this building was built in the late 60s, early 70s. The energy requirement to actually run it without a major refurbishment would be considerable. Uh, in my view, the chances of actually managing to let this considerable space for offices very, very little. In fact, in London, this, I think, the change of use application now, it's deemed permitted yeah. to use a building of this age for it, which is a very sensible use. And I think it's rather short-sighted that the, uh, uh, the amendment to, to um, uh, deal with this application by keeping it as, as office um, really does a disservice to, to Barry. And I strongly second the proposal to allow the, the much-needed housing. Okay, well, we've, we've, had a, we've had a deferral, a proposal for a deferral. Can we vote on that first, please? All in favour of deferral? Two. All those in against deferring? Okay. Um, now we can move on to the recommendation of the officers. Um, we've had a proposal from Councillor Bird and seconded by Councillor Parker. All in favour? All those against? Okay. Abstention. Now, sorry, any abstentions? Two, thank you. Okay, next next on the list. Thank you. Um, 2018-00387, TCA, Flemingston Court, Flemingston, I think this is Marcus. Thank you, Chair, yes. Um, just for clarification, this application is for a tree or two, three trees in a conservation area 
uh, and for their removal they are Leylande trees. This would not normally come before you, but because it is um, from a council, an application from a councillor, it has to come to committee. Um, a site visit has been carried out. The trees have been assessed against what's known as the Tempo um, Assessment for Trees. Um, when you have a tree in a conservation area and you make an application, you have to make an assessment to within six weeks to decide whether um, it is worthy of retention via a tree, uh, sorry, a tree preservation order. Um, that has been done. It is very unusual for Leylande trees to receive that recommendation um, that they are not considered worthy of that, and therefore it is recommended that uh, no, no order be preserved. Any questions on this application? Councillor King? Bearing in mind the briefing we had prior to the planning committee, will there be a replacement? Good question. Marcus? There's no requirement under the trees and conservation areas for a replacement. It's, uh, it's only if it was a, tr a protected tree would you have to replace. Any further questions? John? Someone move? Oh, sorry, sorry, Edward. Sorry, Ed. Uh, <laughs> Can we have a second there? Thank you, Margaret. All in favour? Anyone against? No? Any <laughs> answer? Thank you. I think, I think Excuse me, I haven't finished. We've got item 12 on there. Any items that the chairman has decided are urgent? Nope. Just remains you. Thank you for all coming and thank you for tolerating me. And uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to wish Ben Gray all the, all the best and getting well. Thank you very much.